were talking about the Sermon on the Mount. Um, let's do it. Let's go. Um, but first, look at, can you see that? Can you see my thumb? Do you, you have a little you, red thing on the tip of your left tip of your thumb. Is that what you're talking about? Red mark? <laughs> what I if you it? look at it, it with the backdrop of it the It looks black? like part of your thumb's missing. Because it is. For real? <laughs> yeah. Your dog. I could, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was making soup and I was. Ooh. Is it's part of your thumb in the soup? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But I did use, like, I had a mandolin, you know, like for, for slicing, thinly slicing vegetables. This is a mandolin? Is that a mandolin what it is? is also a musical instrument, it a is. small guitar. It is. <laughs> but this is a so cooking thing? It too? is a device for slicing. Wait, can I I'm Google? I'm Make sure I'm, I'm not making up this word or I'm saying it just wrong enough to be really embarrassing. But. I was using what I think is a mandolin. I like the idea of you <laughs> using a mandolin to cook. What are Me you doing, too. Casey? Oh, <laughs> it is spelt the same way. Okay. Wow. The like the the slice. It's kind of like a slicer. It's like a slicer. Yeah. yeah. So you, but you take Oof. the vegetable and. You know what? Now that I think about it, I think with what I have, I actually have a guard where you can stab the vegetable. <laughs> but I, I was just holding it with my bare hand, yeah. like a dum dum, and Ouch. slicing a zucchini and just you and know, a zucchini just, and thumb. I, I'm yeah. looking at one of these in in big bold letters that says "safe to use." Like <laughs> it won't chop a thumb off. Yeah, just a little so bit. So you of lost it. part of your thumb. When I did. It was a few days ago. Okay. Well, in between shoots, right? Because yeah. we recorded on Tuesday. Yeah. And yeah. now, yeah. And I, I don't know. What, I Was it yesterday? Everyone on the third floor, everybody was kind of gathered. And I said, look at my thumb. I'm missing part of my thumb. I'm oddly very proud of it. Can really? you hold it up for that one? That can, You won't be able to can, see you that. You don't think so? I don't know. It's very... Can you see it, Can we take a zoom in? <laughs> we'll just punch yeah. in a little on that thumb. I, yeah. On my thumb and my re my nails that are in like desperate need of attention. Yeah. Mm. Manicure situation uh, yeah. or something. What are you gonna do? I don't know. I don't know. What, what are, are you gonna, gonna do? do? I feel strangely out of place in this conversation. <laughs> my own podcast. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Not chopping any vegetables or fingers. We're not off. thinking about my fingernails. Or your fingernails. In a desperate yeah. need of attention. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, I know it's not appropriate for this week because we're not talking about cutting off limbs. If that you is know. coming, <laughs> <laughs> it Should is coming. your right hand offend you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah, but we are yeah. looking at the last four beatitudes. Okay. Yeah. Good transition. That was a good segue. Thank you. High five. <laughs> With your non-deformed hand. Yeah. The one that still works. Yeah. Okay. So we let's just go through these. Okay. And should we talk about what ha, where when we're recording this podcast yeah, sure. in relation to oh the weekend? Gosh, well, it's yeah. Friday and I haven't preached the sermon yet. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm out of town on Monday. And so yeah, I thought we would just record it beforehand so we'd still have an episode. So this is going to be fun. I, I haven't taught any of this yet, which for me is um, is a process unto itself. You know, yeah. for, for me, teaching is like kind of um, filling myself up um, and then and then sort of like the sermon is a bit of a revelation to me as I'm saying. I mean, I kind of know what I'm going to say, but also I'm figuring it out as I'm saying it. Uh, by the last time I do it, I, I know what I want to say fully, but the first time it's like I'm kind of working my way through mm -hmm. my own thoughts. And so... Um, so this will be interesting because I get to share those thoughts before I've actually taught them. So I'm, I'm hoping that this will actually make the sermon better, but mm -hmm. will, will, will remain to be seen. We, we'll see. <laughs> I'll find and, out after this week. Yeah, I'm coming. I'm coming in a little blind, Lindsay. You're totally oh. blind. Yeah. So yeah. So like, normally you would have heard the sermon <laughs> yeah. and be able to react to it and mm -hmm. ask questions. That's, we like uh, prep I didn't think about that and side put of it. Yeah. 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 But it'll yeah. be fun. But though. This is. I mean, we have conversations like this regularly. We do. Yeah. So. Yeah, so it's, I, it won't be it won't be that hard. I don't think it'll be that hard. Right. I think it'll be great. Okay, but let's start with the first one, which is verse seven. Well, the 
the fifth one, technically. Fifth beatitude, f- mm-hmm. seventh verse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Blessed are the merciful. For they shall receive mercy. Yeah. 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 So a few thoughts that I, I want to share this weekend that we'll, we'll, we can talk about here. Um, the, the one is that, and, and, and it's right, I think it's Luke 636, Jesus says, and this is really Luke's sort of version, I guess it's, it's called the Sermon on the Plain. So you can imagine Jesus probably said whatever, uh, all that he's saying in the Sermon on the Mount multiple times. Mm-hmm. This probably wouldn't have been just one time he taught this. So Luke's recording another version of it. Uh, just as my sermons differ from from sermon to sermon, you say things in slightly different ways. You get the same thing with Jesus. So uh, Luke six thirty six, he says, "Be be merciful, as your Father is merciful." So it's, it's interesting. The, I think the first thing that I want to talk about this weekend on it, and or I'm I'm, I'm, I'm speaking in the future, but actually, mm-hmm. this will people will be listening to it in the past. Is that it? Mercy makes you like God. So you become like him in your character. And I think I think what I want to get across is that is that um, is that I think maybe one of the most important things you could know about Christianity is that it is more than just an inherent a, a, adherence to certain beliefs, but it's a becoming like mm. God. Mm-hmm like Jesus. The, the two things are meant to go hand in hand. I think said simply, faith without works is dead. Mm-hmm. Um, James said that, right? So that the two things are meant to go together. Um, the, the idea of belief and action um, or, or becoming. And so the, the reason why that matters, and there's a great Jonathan Pennington quote that I may share that just says something to the effect of Christianity is more than just a sort of alteration of Judaism or even a fundamental alteration of Judaism. But the fact that Jesus became flesh and blood means that that the the, the call like the call to this faith is a is an it's an embodied faith. Jesus mm-hmm. became a human being, which means that our faith is more than just ideals, spiritual ideals or doctrinal statements that I have to sort of check off and say, I believe or pray a certain prayer, and now I'm good with God, but that it's 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 a way of life as demonstrated by Jesus, mm-hmm. not just demonstrated, but also taught. So, so to be merciful is to take on the very attributes of, of God, who is himself described as merciful and Lots of occasions. Uh, second things I think to talk about with this would just be that that mercy kind of shows up in two different ways in the New Testament. One of those is kind of a is a is about feeling uh, feelings of pity and compassion. I think mm-hmm. we can all relate to this. Seeing someone in need, mm-hmm. your heart goes out to them. Maybe it's a commercial uh, about children in need or a particular charity or something, and your heart is moved. With compassion, I mean, that's. I think. I, I think that's how we're wired. I think that's. I think that's a good thing. Um, it, Jesus is described as having those feelings somewhere later in Matthew. It says seeing the crowds or something like this. He's moved with compassion, so his heart is moved. He feels something for these for the people that he's looking at. But this is not the word that Jesus is using here um, when he says. Uh, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. This is a different word. So the, the one word denotes feelings, feelings of pity. Um, so in other words, the, the mercy that Jesus is talking about in verse 7 is not a um, a bless your heart kind of mercy, mm-hmm. but it's, it, it may begin there. It mm-hmm. actually may begin with a feeling of compassion, but it's meant to, to move be moved to action. Mm-hmm. And so the idea is that you're stepping into someone else's world, someone else's problem, someone else's situation. I've talked about this before. This is what love does when love, when you love someone. Um, and, and man, like this can be done with people that you don't even know, but by 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 lo- you're you're loving them when you enter into their world and make their problem your mm-hmm. problem. Mm-hmm which is at the very heart of the gospel. That's what Jesus did for us. You can't escape that. It's the very center of the gospel is that God entered into, I mean, John three sixteen. for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have ever, everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but, through the, but that the world through him might be saved. So he came, became one of us, 
to literally take on our condition to bear a burden that we could not mm-hmm. bear for ourselves. And that is uh, what mercy is, mm-hmm. is it's entering into someone else's world and bearing a burden for them that they cannot bear themselves. Yeah. So, or, 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 or And maybe cannot is too strong of a term, but just maybe might be overwhelming them or might be hard for them. You're lifting up what is a struggle for them. In mm-hmm. some cases, mm-hmm. they just can't. Mm-hmm. And so they need, I think we've all been there where you needed, it was like there was something you could not do for yourself and someone lifted lifted you up. Um, that's what that's what mercy is. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's entering into someone else's world. Mm-hmm. And the Good Samaritan's a great example of this. Yeah. So um, I have a couple thoughts. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking about uh, Martin Luther King, who talked about uh, costly interruptions. Mm. And so when you're thinking about mercy, mm-hmm. um, it's almost it's not almost always going to be, it is going to be an interruption. So Yeah, you know what it is. Yeah. To it is. whatever like Especially when because it, because it real because if if mercy, that's a great point, Casey, and I, I need to use that. The, the mercy is a good is an interruption because mm-hmm. because it is um because because to enter into someone else's world and deal with someone else's problem by by like the very definition of that means you're mm-hmm. getting off sort of your own track, your mm-hmm. own agenda, mm-hmm. your own problem, your own timeline mm-hmm. to focus on someone else. So it really is uh, it, it would always be an interruption. Yeah, yeah. And um, so I'm thinking about that it being an interruption, but I'm also thinking about um, how mercy requires us to operate in a way that l- our eyes are lifted. Mm. Um, so, what do you mean by that? Uh, that our eyes are not solely on ourselves yeah, sure. or our issues or our problems or um, absorbed in a screen maybe or yeah. um, thinking about more trivial things. But um, mm. But there's this... I think when you talk about Jesus entering in, like taking on flesh and blood, there's the word incarnation is super helpful, but right. there's also the like the idea of an intercessor, which is somebody who's going to come in between and do something for you that you couldn't do mm-hmm. for yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I think that mercy is 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 being able to be interrupted, but it's also this. Mm. Um, Act of intercession and mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. incarnation. Um, that well, I mean, so, yeah. so we're using some words here that maybe people might mm-hmm. not be terribly familiar with. Mm-hmm. Incarnation, the idea of uh, uh, is 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 the idea of stepping into someone it, else's yeah, world. Yeah, which is interesting if you think about the word compassion. We've talked mm-hmm. about this before. It's the combination of two Latin words, which mean to suffer with. Yeah. Wow. So the idea of mm-hmm. Incarnation is Jesus literally enters into the suffering of a world. He doesn't stand far off and say, right. "Man, that really, that really stinks." Yeah. <laughs> but he takes on, he takes on the form of a human. Yeah, to enter he's not into passing. It. It's not like it's not even like um, going to a third world country and mm-hmm. walking through the slums mm-hmm. and saying, "This is terrible." Mm-hmm. It's, it's like walking through and moving in. Mm-hmm. And that's a it's a remarkable thing. It's a it's a, it, it 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 would be remarkable to hear of anyone doing such a thing, mm-hmm. especially from a first world country. Someone with means, someone that I mean, it, I mean, you could imagine taking it, what a story it would be if the you know uh, Elon Musk or a Jeff Bezos or a Bill Gates or whatever uh, set aside all their wealth and moved into uh, the lowest slum mm-hmm. and decided to just live with with suffering people. That's essentially what Jesus did. That's what Philippians 2 talks about. Yeah, that's actually where, <laughs> where, you went. where I went. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it says in verse 5, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. So it's available to you. Mm-hmm. Um, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself by yeah. becoming obedient to the point of death, even yeah. death on a cross. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, mercy. Yeah. It's it's 
some, and I think that beatitude is interesting because it's the only one that has like that direct correlation of like, if you are this, you will receive this. Mm. Like it's the same thing. Does that, or, or not the if. So I'm glad you brought yeah. that up. So this is a great, mm. this is a great, I think, something that needs to be mentioned. And I'll, I'll talk about it this weekend as well. Blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy. So it, it sounds like karma. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of Christian people ascribe, they we see the world through kind of a karma lens, a mm-hmm. tit for tat lens. If I do this, I'm going to get this back. If I do good, good will come back to me. And that's that's karma. The Bible doesn't exactly teach that. Mm-hmm. Um, what does Jesus then mean when he says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy? Well, the idea is that without 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 um, recognizing if I, if I can't here's a way to put it if I can't extend mercy to another person if I can't extend forgiveness to another person there's another spot where he says if you don't forgive or else your heavenly father won't forgive you why does he say that is it like if you don't do this then God's not going to be able to do this mm-hmm. no the idea is that if you can't extend mercy to someone, then how could you ever have... Can you really say that you yourself have received mercy? Mm-hmm. Do you see that? If you, mm-hmm. if, you, if you can't extend forgiveness to someone else, can you really believe that you yourself needed forgiveness? And the answer is no. Like you can't... Mercy can only be extended from a place of someone who recognizes that they themselves have received mercy. Mm-hmm. So the idea is that when, I've, when I recognize that I've received it, um, it, 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 it sets me up to be the kind of person who is then merciful to others. And this, this is what you find through human history, mm-hmm. is that when people have experienced a life-altering mercy and forgiveness, it changes the, their whole orientation to the rest it of the does, world. Yeah. They then start to extend mercy to others. So the idea is that if you can't the, the merciful are merciful because they know mercy has been extended to them. The unmerciful are not merciful because they believe they have no need of mercy. Mm-hmm. That's the idea. It's like they were standing for people who are standing on their own rights, their own, their own record, their own whatever resume. Um, it's easy to look down on other people when you feel like, and I, I used to say it this way, it's hard to extend grace to others when you feel like you've earned it yourself. Mm. Why would I give away mm-hmm. what I had to work really hard for? But when you recognize, rightfully so, that everything you have is a gift from God and that God has been utterly gracious to you. This is why the beginning of the Beatitudes is blessed are the poor in spirit. It's mm-hmm. like, well, it has to begin here. I mean, if, you don't, if you're not mourning over your own sin yeah. um, and not recognizing how much mercy has been extended to you, well, then mercy's like, you're, you're never going to get there. But when you recognize what God's done for you, this is, this is the thing for me. It's like, when you recognize that God's been merciful to you, it wrecks you in such a way mm-hmm. that you then turn around and go, well, then I want to extend that same mercy to other people. Mm-hmm. It changes the way you view the world. It just does. It changes the way you view other people. I am not naturally the most compassionate person, Mm -hmm. but supernaturally have become a much more compassionate person than I had any right to be on my own. But it's it it begins with the mercy of God extended toward me. So this is not a karma thing. It's the idea that if if you're not if you're not merciful, it's because you don't think you need any mercy. If you've not if you're not forgiving, it's because you don't think you need any forgiveness. And then how then can God forgive you? I like that. That's how D. A. Carson said it. How then can God forgive you if you think you don't need you, if you, you need don't no, need it? If you don't need it, mm-hmm. so forgiveness and mercy must begin with a recognition of need. Mm-hmm. That's the only prerequisite, really, to any of this is that we recognize our need before God. Mm-hmm. So. Um, so when I think of, I think of a merciful person, um, I think there are some people who I, they have a gift of mercy. Yeah. My wife has a gift of mercy. She really does. It's, 
I saw it on display last night. It was beautiful. When I talk about like spiritual gifts, because there's there's so many of them, and and they've been distributed through throughout the body of Christ. Like you have certain spiritual gifts. Heather has certain spiritual gifts, and you guys are better together yeah. when you're operating in those. Um, but for the person who doesn't have a spiritual gift of mercy... That's me. Yeah. yeah. So what does it look like for you so if it's you don't not have a, the gift? This is good. What does it look like for you to practice it? So, well, what it, what it, what it looks like is in, in the way that I can, it's like... Um, how would I say it? Some people are gifted at basketball. Others are not gifted at basketball, but both can still play the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I, I, you know, it's, it's interesting that I'm using, even using that analogy because last night I was at the hospital for one reason or another. We were visiting some friends um, who just happened to be there briefly, and God's grace, it, it, it didn't end up being that big of a deal. Thank God. While we were there, we ran into an or a, another church on the mover who was just sitting in the lobby. And so we w- went over and started, you know, went and Heather. And so anyway, we go over and we just start, and Heather just starts doing her thing, mm-hmm. and just asking questions. How are you doing? What's going? How's that? How is that affecting you? And just sitting there for I don't know how long we were there. It was it five to ten minutes maybe. Mm. And I, as I just sat there in awe at the ease with which she could talk to someone that she doesn't have a deep relationship with, but just to talk to them. And really hear them and care, and then pray for them. And I'm I get to be there and be a part of the prayer. But I walk out and I was like, "That is amazing." Mm-hmm. I'm like, "You are like watching you do that is like watching Michael Jordan play basketball." That's what I told her. Because <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I can play basketball. Like, yeah. like I can I can be I can be I can extend mercy to people in the in the best way that I know how. Mm-hmm. But then watching her, who literally has a gift of mercy, it's like, yeah. that's another level. Yeah. It just like, and so God uses her in that way, and it's a really beautiful thing to behold. Um, and so I think mercy is is for all of us, right? This is, as I said, I don't know, yeah, last week, I think, this isn't a buffet, right? Mm-hmm. So you don't get to go, well, mercy's for some people. No, mm-hmm. some people are better at this than you, and they always will be. That doesn't preclude me from extending mercy mm-hmm. Where I can in the in the sphere, it's like I'm not gonna he, I'm not gonna fix the world, but there are some situations where God brings people across my path. I was in a, a, a um, tag agency um, in Oklahoma. It's basically like kind of like a DMV, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and there was a lady in there. This was a couple of years ago or whatever. She was coming in to pay for, like to I don't know renew a tag something. And it, I could just tell she was up there talking to the lady. It was going to end up costing. It was like eighty bucks, maybe. Say, I don't know what it was. It wasn't a ton of money, but enough that it was causing her a lot of distress. Mm-hmm. And it was really she didn't, and she didn't have the money. And so it was, it was, it was just a prompting for me um, feel compassion mm-hmm. to be able to step up and say, mm-hmm. "Hey, let me pay for that for you." Mm-hmm. And 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 so and so that was that's that's the kind of thing. It's like uh, you know that doesn't happen every day. Yeah, it probably could happen more. I mm-hmm. think if I had uh, wider, uh, more open eyes to see it. Yeah, but I think I think in the places that God you know prompts me and opportunities that He gives me, mm-hmm. that's where I can extend compassion. What I don't need to do, and this this maybe will help some folks, I don't need to spend any time feeling guilty that I can't do what Heather can do. Mm-hmm. It's just not, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. God's not giving me that gift, and why should I care? Like, or why should I, why should I worry or fret or mm-hmm. or feel bad? Mm-hmm. And so uh, I do what I can with what I can. And then and I think Heather's got a different level of that gift and she uses it accordingly. Yeah. And the and the body of Christ and others need the fullest expression of her. Gift, yes, they do. And they need the fullest expression of yeah. yours. That's it. And me yeah. trying to be her isn't going to mm-hmm. benefit anybody any yeah. more than it's it's better. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. So um yeah, I have I've had similar I don't I also don't have a gift of mercy. Mm-hmm. So it's something that I've had to um pray about because I so I find myself praying and specifically the Lord's Prayer. Mm. Um 
And I remember there have been several times, and I don't know wh- why it happens when I'm running, but there's a, a lot of stories around when I'm running for some reason, um, because usually that that's something that I do for myself, mm. for my for yeah. like my so those health, costly my interruptions mood, show it is up a, there. <laughs> it is totally yeah. yeah you were and, out there to do something. Oh else. my goodness, yeah. Sure. I'm thinking of one. I'm I'm thinking of two stories, but one of them. I was running with Matt. We live kind of close to TU, Tulsa University. It's like right there. So I have a little loop that I can do. And Matt's running, and I'm running through the campus, and I see someone laying laying there just completely passed out in the middle of oh, the day wow. and on the side, like on a – just what is like is the the sidewalk? Yeah, well, no, it's like around a tree, like the oh, yeah. cinder blocks around a tree. Oh, okay, oh, like yeah, yeah, I don't, I Some don't know. Some kind of a planter thing. Sure. Yeah, he's so he's totally asleep, but I see the side of his shoe, and I see his shoes are, I mean, they're about gone, like, mm. or they're they're not doing good, and I'm like, I don't think this guy wants to walk anywhere, so. I run up to Matt and I say, hey, um, you were telling me that I need to get rid... I have big feet for a girl. <laughs> I do. I wear I wear a size 11 shoe. So that's like a nine and a half for a guy. Okay. So I could... Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty good size. But and I have... You're extremely tall, too. I, I am extremely... I'm not... Okay, I'm sorry that I said... Extremely. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. I'm I love being as tall as I am. But I am 5'11". No one has seen her stand up. She is. I'm 5'11", and I have feet that are appropriate for... That's what I mean. I totally agree. Exactly. So I won't fall down. An appropriate sized foot. (laughs) I I have pretty good balance, you know, because of my feet. So, but I also have big shoes. So, and I had some... And I... And I had some men's socks, you know, because my feet are so big, <laughs> brand new. So I we run home and I'm like, I got to go. I got to go back. I got to find, I had a, a good pair of shoes without holes in them in my closet and I wasn't going to wear, wear them again. And so I huh. s- stuffed some new socks, got my shoes, drove back <laughs> and like parked on the side. I'm still like completely dressed from running. And I'm, I just run, I'm so nervous about this interaction. Uh-huh. I don't want to, I don't even, I don't even know what to do yeah. in this moment because he's totally passed out. But I'm, I'm like, curious okay. To how you handled this. So, well, I mean, maybe Set not the, the shoes greatest. down and run away. That's what I, I would have done. I, well, I ran up to him. I said, hey, and as I was running up, I saw massive holes in the bottom of his shoes and he had no socks on. Like I still saw his entire foot basically, like his wow. shoes were not usable. And so, and there are these guys <laughs> standing over, they had like, they were on their break or something and they, they go, I see you, <laughs> you're doing the Lord's work. <laughs> How do you know? Well, I'm running down the street with an extra pair of shoes in my hands. And so I sat them down next to him. I said, hey, I don't know if these will fit you, but there's a new pair. At least there's a new pair of socks in there for you if yeah. you want them. And then I ran away. <laughs> Did he even respond to you? <laughs> he, I, he sat up and uh, I, and he was just kind of like shocked. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And I and I I just was like I'm I'm not gonna extend a conversation I don't know I just was like yeah yeah and there but was, as I drove by he was just sitting there with his head in his not, hands not not trying to um yeah like um you know share all of our good deeds here for everyone to hear but I'm um, a, yeah I'm intentionally only no 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 that. not that yeah. no no I but I but I was um. I was flying back from somewhere through maybe Denver or Dallas. I think it was Dallas, maybe, and we weren't we weren't going to make our flight. Something happened. We we didn't get in in time, and so we were going to have to fly back the next morning. The airlines putting us up, that kind of thing. It's late. I'm hungry, so I go to the hotel. Um, I'm going to get a burger from the hotel restaurant or whatever it is, and so I'm down in the lobby and. Um, I'm ordering this, I ordered this burger and I'm just waiting for it so I can get it, eat it, and then just go to bed and wake up early the next morning and fly home. So as I'm sitting there, there was a, and I'm not even going to remember how this whole story went, but this waitress comes up and she's talking to the girl at the front and she's just mad. 
so mad at this guy who had just come through big order or whatever, didn't tip at all, whole thing. And she's just angry, cursing about him, all this stuff, just just talking terrible about the guy, the two of them right there. And, and while all of this is going on, um, yeah, I'm just like, you know what? I will tip her for that guy. I don't know what it was, but I'm going to give her – I don't, know, I don't know what I, I – I honestly cannot remember how much money I gave her. Um, and, and I mean, I'm, I'm like right in the middle of her just being so angry mm-hmm. and just – and when I did it, the, the reaction was just like she was stunned because she knew how she had been just before. And, um, and I'm, I'm not – I you know, I hesitate to say any of that just because I'm not really here to pat myself on the back. That's not the, the point. But it's 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 extending mercy into a situation. Sometimes it looks like that, right? Where it's ugly. It's not exactly. Uh, so, some sometimes it's something that warms your heart, and sometimes it's something where it's like, you like I really don't like the way you're responding. Right? Yeah. Like like right now. Yeah. But let like but it was the Lord stepped into my life when like while we were the scripture says while I was still a sinner, Christ mm-hmm. died for me. Again, this is Christian compassion and mercy is that it motivates me to act before someone is is worthy of that of that mercy and action. Mm-hmm. And I think one thing I would love to talk about this weekend and um I keep talking in the future, which is just so hard for me, and I'm sure you want me to stop because it's this is going to be listened to after. So one thing you haven't I haven't done it that much. <laughs> I've done it a lot. Um, it's just been three times. <laughs> but I, I think one thing to is interesting to or worth considering is that it's often easier to show compassion to people we don't know mm. than it is to give mercy to those we do know. Mm-hmm. It's easier to extend, and I think acts of mercy can show up with, you know, in my case with my wife, with my kids, to to like to step in and make. I came home this last weekend; it had snowed, and it's like I'm just I've taken care. I preached three times, four times on the weekend, three times that day. I'm exhausted. I'm ready to sit down. Just kind of conk out for a little while, watch some football. No sooner do I lay down on the couch, this is a great, and my wife's like, or actually, uh, my daughter B comes up to me and says, "Can you get down the, the winter clothes that are up in the attic? All the ski stuffs up there. We don't use it all that often because it just doesn't snow all that often." And I'm like, "Are you serious? That's going to mean I have to go back out to the garage, back my truck out of the garage." Pull down that stupid godforsaken ladder, which is just miserable. Climb all the way up there, lower that big giant bin down. I mean, and it's a, I don't want to, it's everything in me doesn't want to do it. Mm-hmm. But in some sense, I think that's not also an act of mercy. It's, it's, it's letting my schedule be interrupted for the sake of someone else that is in my life. And, and so, yeah, I, I think it's a, that's what's been done for us. Yeah, it's a good reminder to, to extend mm-hmm. that to others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and our and <clears throat> I think ultimately the reason we would share those stories or talk about this at all is to um, ask the question: Are you interruptible? Mm. Are you available? To, wow. for that yeah. to extend mercy? That's good. That yeah. might end up in the sermon. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, or did it? It did. Oh. Who can say? Whoa. <laughs> Good. Where are we? Well, this, we? We don't have to go here if we don't want to, but what would you guys what would you guys say to someone who's afraid of maybe being a doormat or mm. being taken advantage mm-hmm. of? Um yeah, I mean, mercy. I think, I think I think there's a balance to this, right? Mm-hmm. Like I think I think it's easy to be taken advantage of. I would say this. I would never want I would never want to stop for fear of for fear of being taken advantage of. I would never want to shortcut mercy operating through me. I would mm. rather be merciful and be taken advantage of than not merciful but never taken advantage of. Yeah. So that's a risk I'm willing to take. That's yeah. number one. I'm just I'm going to give to people that don't deserve it. Now, 
this is just me talking. I do not give money to panhandlers on the side of the road mm-hmm. because I because it, it sounds to me like, from what I can tell, that I'm not helping them in any way. So I think I think there is a call to be wise with your compassion. Mm-hmm. I love what Ray Ortland said that love without wisdom will hurt people with the best of intentions. I think that's really good. So we're called to both mercy and wisdom. So to be merciful in a wise way, and I think. I think um, you know there may be there may be I, I would um, I, w- I would not I would not um, disadvantage myself or my family to such a degree that it would really cost us a lot um, unless I really knew God was was leading me to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a big thing. So I wouldn't wouldn't be like I'm emptying out my savings account. Um, to go, like I have, my first duty is to my family. So there's, there's a wisdom that has, and wisdom and balance and all of those things. Um, and, and so, and so there's that. Um, yeah. And then I think on the, on the flip side of that, I wouldn't want to be so untouchable or so jaded by the possibility of being taken advantage of that I'm never willing to be merciful to anyone, to always believe that everything is a scam and so forth. And so sometimes I think you have to be willing to to take that risk. Mm-hmm. Well, um, and, and later in the Sermon on the Mount, it sounds like maybe our tendency is more toward the first one. Like, I don't want to be taken advantage of, so I'll never do this. Because later Jesus is like, you've heard an eye for an eye, but I say someone slaps you, turn the other cheek, asks you to walk one mile, go two, like those types of things. And I don't know if that mm. applies in the same way, but he's kind of like, Go above and beyond. Do yeah. more. Like, well, I think, I think specifically, I think specifically that we'll, we'll get there. It'd be interesting. I haven't studied those passages yet, yeah. but I look forward to them. Those are some of the more difficult passages. My hunch would be that the point of that is to say that when people are willfully trying to take advantage of you to 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 humiliate you, do not respond with anger, but respond with a a, a generosity and kindness back toward them that will what is the verse it'd be like keeping hot coals yes, on their in, head in their mm-hmm. on their uh, head or in yeah. their yeah. yeah it's romans well i think it's an old testament quotation i'm pretty sure it's a proverb at any uh, rate yeah. i think i think i think that's probably what's at play i mean jesus literally did turn the other cheek when he's being and i think this is probably probably under the pretense of being persecuted for righteousness' sake, yeah. not a thief trying to break into your home and take your TV or your couch or well, who's stealing couch, but like your valuables and say, yeah. "Well, here, I, let me open, let me open up my safe for you. Yeah. Come on in." Like I don't, I don't, I don't think yeah. that. Um, but there is, you know, there is. Um, I go back to. Um, the, the Les Mis, um, yeah. um, mm-hmm. the, the premise of Les Mis and what, sh- like, whatever it is, Les Miserables, uh, mm-hmm. it's a great story. Yeah. Um, I prefer the, the Liam Neeson movie where he's a convict, Jean Valjean, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he stays in the home of a priest, I want to say, and the priest has silver and he robs him blind in the night and takes off. And he's caught with all the silver, and they take him back to the priest's home, the, 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 the police, whoever. And they bring him back to that priest and they say, he stole this from you, did he not? And he says, no, it was a gift. Mm-hmm. I gave it to him. You can have it. And that act of mercy transformed him. Yeah. And transforms him through the rest of the film. It's pretty powerful. Yeah. So I, I, I think there are times like that, right? Where it's, but that's a, it's just a different. There are moments I think where God leads people and out of compassion to do that mm-hmm. um, in radically generous, mm-hmm. merciful ways that rock people to their core, yeah. where we respond. But I, I, I also don't think that is on the flip side of that a, um, what would I say? A, a, a rule for life that I should be that I should be doing that in, in any and every circumstance. That every time I go to buy my lunch, I should buy mm-hmm. lunch for everyone in line, or yeah. or like yeah, right. So there's a there's a there's a there's a way to do this with wisdom. Yeah, I think that's the idea. Yeah, to- and I, I wonder with the 
fear of taking advantage of. If there's some sort of um, root in that you feel that you have to protect yourself and yeah. instead of trusting that and there is one. And allowing the Lord to, yeah. That would guard you. To guard you, exactly. Lead you and to, if, if he's asking you that he would Well, one way to do you. it, I mean, at least financially or time-wise, would be to say, I'm going to set aside a certain amount of time and I'm going to give a certain amount of money Mm-hmm. And um, and this is what I feel like I can give, you know, in a year or whatever. Yeah. And then you kind of know, and then and then you can kind of test and experiment and say, I'm going to give this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I want to see what happens. So, mm-hmm. Lord, uh, here's here's you know five hundred dollars or whatever. I don't know what, yeah. what, what right like what would be in, over the course of a year you might want to give. Yeah. Just say, I'm going to have this available. I'm going to budget for this. This is going to be the money that I'm going to use. And so, would you just direct me? Mm-hmm. Um, as I, I, I only will, want to do this when your Holy Spirit directs me, but I, I'm, and there may be some promptings and things like you feel or like a nudge. It's like, okay, I'm going to try this, and and then just watch and see um, yeah. what happens. I mean, uh, I would again, I would rather err on the side of being of being more merciful than not at all. Yeah, I, I just would rather err there. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, so uh, let's go to the next one. Mm-hmm. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Yeah. I love this one. I do too. I really like it's this really, one a lot. They're, they're, I really like, I, I mean, all eight of them are, there's not one yeah. that, but I, these last four are really powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, I've really enjoyed considering them. So, uh, blessed are the pure in heart. So, yeah, I guess it's the idea of like, what does it mean then to be pure in, in heart? And the idea, I think the best way I can describe it is that it's when your internal motives and your external actions match. That's the idea. So it would be it would be living a, a, a wholehearted mm-hmm. devotion toward God to where... To where what I'm doing, uh, that's good, <laughs> that in 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 uh, to follow God or to live His way of life, is done out of devotion to God, not not out of service to self. So, I'll never forget years ago, and this is a huge part of my what I would call my real Jesus journey. I consider myself a Christian from a very early age, but but. I found God to be more uh, useful than beautiful. I loved the, the the idea of what He could provide for me, but I didn't I didn't love Him for Him as much. And uh, one of the things that when, when kind of the Lord got a hold of my heart was through the preaching and teaching of Tim Keller, pastor and uh, Redeemer uh, Presbyterian in, in New York City. And Tim passed away last year. It was a um, been hugely influential to a lot of people, me included. This was before he had written The Reason for God. I it just really was kind of a Holy Spirit thing the way I happened upon his ministry. And he didn't even have a podcast that you could listen to. I had to buy sermons from Redeemer um, and have them sent mm. to me on CD. And so <laughs> I was listening to his his sermons. And I'll never forget um, hearing him say that you not only need to repent of the wrong things you've done, but the right things you've done for the wrong reasons. And as soon as he said that, I knew that my life was filled with right things done for wrong reasons. Biblically speaking, or maybe you could say Jesus speaking, uh, in in the sort of Jesus story, this is what he would call hypocrisy. Now, we understand hypocrisy in a different way. It's interesting. The original, the, the Greek word from which we get the the, the English word hypocrite um, originally just meant actor. It's a play acting term. And it's interesting when you think about an actor, someone who's acting, they're putting on a persona and they're so embodying that persona a good actor does that you don't know it's not really them. You watch someone like Daniel Day-Lewis act who can so, mm-hmm. so inhabit a role that you can't imagine him as anyone else. You know, when da- when he plays Daniel Plainview in There Will Be Blood, it's like 
He's unbelievable. His voice, the way he uses his voice in that movie is, is or the way he uses his voice when he acts, period. The way he uses his voice in Gangs of New York as Bill the mm-hmm. Butcher is, uh, is amazing. Um, in The Name of the Father is another movie. He's in The Boxer. Um, and, and all the movies that he's in, he's, he, he so inhabits the the character that he's playing that to see him as another character or even even this is even better to see an actor that you didn't know was british <laughs> who played an american mm-hmm. part and then you mm-hmm. see them and you're like wait a minute you're 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 not american it's mm-hmm. kind of jarring mm-hmm. to find or or have you ever seen an actor who played a villain in a movie that you so hated them mm-hmm. that to then see them as just themselves and not that villain, you still are are kind of trying to reconcile those feelings of hatred toward them because mm-hmm. that's just how you you see them, and yet that's not who they are. They could so play that part that it fooled you. That's what Jesus means by hypocrite. So we mean hypocrite as someone someone who says one thing and does another. Yeah. Um, so you think about like a, a pastor <laughs> who preaches about the importance of fidelity and devotion in marriage, and then we find out they're having an affair. That That's that's what we think of as hypocrisy. There's plenty of, of political hypocrisy, of, of campaigning on certain promises and then finding out, you know, you're not sort of living a life in accordance with the things that you've been kind of putting forward, right? That's that's how we think of hypocrisy. And no doubt that is a form of hypocrisy. That is not, though, what Jesus is talking about. He doesn't refer to it, I guess, this way in the Sermon on the Mount, but the scribes and the Pharisees later in Matthew are called multiple times hypocrites, you hypocrites. And the reason that they're hypocrites is that they're actors. They are doing the right things. They do not have a disconnect between what they say and what they do. They practice, they literally, in many ways, they're practicing what they're preaching. Mm-hmm. Ah, but they're doing it from a different motivation. It's what's internal. The real them is hiding behind the facade of good works. And this is what's called hypocrisy. Now, like, I don't know how much you relate to this already, but if you really stop and think about it, <laughs> and if you really start to examine, the motives for why you do what you do, it, it gets it gets um, disturbing really quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, you know, and we're going to get into this as we dig deeper in the Sermon on the Mount. We were talking before we started rolling about social media. Well, how much of our social media is hypocrisy? Not putting forth an image of someone that we're that we're not? Or how about this? How much of our social media is virtue signaling? Um, or even or even fishing for compliments? Mm. I I'll be careful here. I'll I'll stop I'll stop short of, of fully judging um, them like this. But how many young ladies are posting pictures of themselves? Um, online, maybe not completely, but maybe more than 50% because they know how the compliments they will receive for the way they look in the picture. Mm-hmm. And so and so then the response is, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you for all of this. But inwardly, the motivation is personal affirmation. Yeah. Like we do this all the time. This is why Jesus says, don't tell anybody that you're fasting. And don't, I mean, churches are terribly guilty of this. Like, let's broadcast all of our good deeds. And Jesus, like, specifically says, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. And, and essentially what he says to people is, like, you have your reward. Mm-hmm. Because it's so easy to, like the Pharisees, trumpet ourselves. Look what I'm doing. Oh, and we and, and we do it in such subtle ways. I know I do it. Um, I found myself surfacing things in conversation where I have wanted to maybe criticize someone. And I know that if I kind of circle around to this 
this area that you're likely to bring up that person or that church or that pastor, and then that will give me a way in to say, I don't, you know, this. And and in my in my mind, I can justify it because well, I didn't bring it up, and it was just in the flow of conversation. But I know what I'm doing. Like if I really examine my heart, I know what I'm doing. And so the idea is, blessed are the pure in heart. It's a, it's a, it's someone who who is is before God in a humble in a, in a, in a uh, yeah a humble way, inviting the Lord to in to examine the mm-hmm. motives behind the actions for yeah. why you're doing what you're doing. And it's interesting, the promises you will then see God. I think it's interesting that the Pharisees who themselves did all sorts of good deeds, but Jesus reprimands them because it was all external. It was an external righteousness. He says later, and he's quoting Isaiah, um, these people honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me. It's a, it's a devotion to God only in only kind of um, skin deep. It doesn't really permeate the heart. Luke 15 is another great example of this, of the, the older brother and the prodigal son. I, I, Tim Keller was hugely helpful for me in understanding that story and that there are two ways to be your own savior in God. One is like the younger brother to go out and do whatever it is that you want to do. And the other is to live like the older brother and be very, 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 very good. And in being very, 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 very good, you get God in your debt. But when you do that, you have no grace for anyone else. That's what I was saying earlier, because it's really hard to extend grace to others when you feel like you've earned it yourself. And Tim's point was that neither one loves the Father. They're just both out for what they what they can get for themselves. They're, they're going about it in different ways. So it's interesting to me that these Pharisees, who were the older brothers in the the kind of first century context that Jesus ministered in, had God right in front of them and never saw him. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. It's like when your when your motives are wrong, God can be moving right in front of you, and you will not see it. And even worse. They ascribe the power of God to the devil, and and actually claim that Jesus is working through the power of the devil. It, mm-hmm. It's 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 remarkable. So, um, I'm th- yeah. This is a very convicting, yeah, beatitude. Was, yeah, <laughs> it's. Uh, what were you gonna say? Well, okay, the, my counselor. Mm. I had a, a conversation about. This because I, as what you're saying, I do this all the time. I'm always bringing stuff up. I'm like, oh my gosh, why did I say that? And I live, I often will at the end of the day, and hopefully I'm not the only one in the world who does this, but just like, oh my gosh, why did I say that? Yeah. And, and just kind of a lot of regret of just like talking too much or that sort of thing. And I was mm. talking to my counselor about this, and she's like, what do you think that is? And I was like, oh, attention. I uh, just want attention. And she yeah. kind of asked me to reframe the way mm. I think about attention, that actually what each of us have is a deep desire for connection. Yeah, I agree. So we're longing for a connection. And so maybe in this has completely changed now mm. my response to that, um, those that regret moment. Oh, I, I vied for attention. I have not let my heavenly Father fill a deep exactly. need for connection. Mm-hmm. That's in exactly me. it. And so let's reframe so that in my head. Th- every like, different yeah. way. Yeah. 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 Not that I'm this a horrible person. Yeah, I am a terrible person. But there is a th- yeah. not this. Um, There's a need. Yes. That really does need to be filled, and that it can be. And filled. it can be filled. There is a solution to it. Exactly. I'm not just going to be. So purity yeah. in heart is not that you're perfect inside. And by the way, when he says be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect, what it means is to be an integrated whole. Like don't be divided. Don't be. Don't have. This is. I think this is what he's referring to later when he's going to talk about the single eye. It's. Mm-hmm. It's. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's, it's. It's. It's not being double minded. Mm-hmm. Is the idea is mm-hmm. that you're not of two minds. 
that your actions and your heart are in sync with one another, that you're living from a whole heart, so that the things that you do that are right, it's interesting. And Jesus does this many times as he compares two people in very much the same situation, but it's the inner motivation that changes it. Do you remember the the where he talks about the, the publican and tax collector who is at the temple or whatever, mm-hmm. and he's beating his breast before God saying, mm-hmm. I'm not worthy. And then there's the Pharisee who says, I thank God I'm not like all these other sinners and idiots out here. I'm yeah. kind of above them. Both are praying. The motivation has everything to do with it. It's what's mm-hmm. coming from the inside. He literally yeah. says that it's not what goes into a person that defiles them, but yeah. what comes out. So when our hearts are rightly oriented to God, God, I want to please you, then right action follows. Yeah. But right action is not always the indicator of what's happening on, on the inside. That's the idea. Yeah. What are you looking I, for? I'm thinking of so many things. <laughs> Give me one. <sighs> okay. So, well, you. this is one of my favorite verses. Um <clears throat> But uh, Psalm 86, 11, teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Mm. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. Um, Yeah, It is the sense of all, whole, but also more than than just like a whole lot. Yeah. Like a a unified heart. Complete. so yes, so all of my desires, everything yeah. that I want, everything, <clears throat> my desire for connection, um, it it is living before God, being completely open to what like what I think of as Him. He's able to look at me, like look at everything, and He's able to tell me what to do about it, mm-hmm. and mm. I'm not doing His job for Him. Right. And I think that for me, yeah. I always want to. I yeah. always want to be the Holy Spirit. Oh, and yeah. that only leads me down <laughs> a path of shame because mm-hmm. I'm never going to be enough. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. I'm never going to be able to make myself good enough. I'm never going to be able to give myself the right kind of advice, no matter how many affirmations yeah. sure. I say that, oh, I'm beautiful and I am worthy or, or whatever I, yeah. I, I want to say to make myself be able to get up for one more day yeah. and post one more picture or w- w- like one more tweet to to get affirmation from the outside and then I that doesn't satisfy me and so I'm like well I must need affirmation from from myself yeah <laughs> I heard somebody literally I, yesterday I was listening to a podcast of a guy saying that he was essentially best friends with himself good for and him his, and I was just like <laughs> what a load of crap <laughs> Is that like I heard this was years ago, but somebody like self coupling. <laughs> they were like, wow. I had a marry I got married to, to myself. No. <laughs> but so sort of it's a sort of kind yeah. of spirit of the age. It's like yeah. the, the way out of this is to up our self esteem and the only one that can do that is yeah. you. And it's it's yeah. it, but it's yeah, it's miserable. But it but must to be, be nice pure... to like yourself. Like, yeah. Just... Well, yeah. Well, okay. I mean, so, how do, how do, what do you tell Hitler? So this Yikes. is the other thing I'm thinking about. Like, how does he? How does he find affirmation from himself? Like, <laughs> at some point, someone from the outside has to say, "Yeah, you're okay." Yeah. yeah. Yes. 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 And and who better to do it than the one who created you Correct. and knows you completely? Yeah. Yes. And yeah. and yes. he's the only one who can affirm you in a yes. way that's actually going to yes. fill you. Yeah. Up in the way that you need to be in the moment. And I'm also thinking, okay, I'm also thinking this is the theological Bible nerd in me about how when Moses hmm. wants to see that he's like, show me your glory. And God is like, no one shall see me and live. Mm-hmm. Like you cannot see God and stay alive. Right. And so you, it requires a super something supernatural to happen. I don't know. This is like just the beginning of a thought. But um in John 1 it says um no one has seen God, but um Yeah, but we have seen him essentially. But we have seen him sure. in Jesus. Yeah. And I don't know. There's something cool there that I don't have a fully formed thought okay. around. Thank you. But it, but it is this blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. 
but no one shall see God and live. And so purity of heart requires death in mm. us mm. to lay ourselves down, to lay you know, our that's desires a really good down. Thought. Wow. That's really to, cool. I got there. <laughs> you got there. Well done. <laughs> it took me a second. Well, I was worried that this plane yeah. was going to crash. <laughs> <laughs> but it, yeah, it does. It requires a, a death in us yeah. wow. um, to allow ourselves to be wow. seen by God. Wow. You know, uh, I think a lot of, and yeah, like, I think we can all say that inside every one of us is a deep insecurity, mm. you know, mm-hmm. there just is, am I enough? I don't, I don't know that anyone's ever, any human being has ever not asked that question. We mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. want to know, am I enough? Um, and, and, I, and, and, and the, you know, the, the response to that kind of insecurity, especially when you go after, it leads you to one of two places would be despair and pride. You're, you're, you're mm-hmm. either going to get to a spot where you feel like you're better than other people, mm-hmm. which is what happened with the Pharisees. So, so you work really, really hard, and you you kind of you, you get to a place where you can now look down on other people mm-hmm. because of your because of your uh, accomplishment or you wind up at despair. Now, despair is not really as bad a place to be in the sense because at least at despair, well, you know you're miserable and you need help. Mm-hmm. And so Jesus had a lot of compassion on people like that. Those who went the pr- pride route, th- th- very little compassion toward them because they, because they can't. It's like, what was the quote? There is none so blind as those who will not see. Mm-hmm. That's the idea. Is he mm-hmm. like they couldn't see mm-hmm. and wouldn't see. They couldn't see God because they wouldn't see God. And I I, I think I, I think that's what you're seeing in our world is, and probably we're both in strange, weird ways, in congruent ways. We're probably combinations of both of those things at alternating times. We yo-yo from feeling prideful about who we are to feeling terrible about who we are in the span of moments, maybe. And um, But there is, and I can just say this for my own self, like I'm not a, um, I'm not perfect, but man, there, there, is, there is a real freedom in living your life uh, being seen by God, mm-hmm. allowing him to see you, and to, to kind of live in the light of, of what he says about you and not have to live beholden to not just everybody else's opinion, but here's what's even better, not even your own opinion about mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And, and so, yeah, I, I, I think... I think if you're willing to lay yourself bare before the Lord, like you said, which is a death, um, I think you come out of it on the other side a, a, a much more stable, um, kind of fully formed, I don't want to say fully formed, but like I think of stable, planted, yeah, like kind integrated, of almost, yeah, into almost a like hole. you're, yeah. <laughs> Or could you describe them as a tree planted by streams of water Mm -hmm. that I am not having to jump or perform or dance for you just because you think I should? Mm -hmm. It's a really nice way to live. Mm -hmm. And I think we have a generation, particularly these days, I think this affects all people, but social media, I think, has made it worse. And I think we have a generation that wants desperately that kind of identity uh, a solid, uh, planted, permanent identity where I'm not always second guessing myself and, mm-hmm. and trying to prove myself. And that's a really beautiful way to live. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, yeah. yeah. Blessed are the pure in heart, they will see God. Yeah. I like and that. And blessed are the peacemakers, yeah. for they shall be called sons of God. Yeah. So um, this is so helpful, I think. Um, for for to consider this this whole idea, um, pe- peace. So we we have to think about what peace meant or means to us, and what peace means to meant to Jesus. Again, everything he's saying is rooted in kind of a uh, what, what you could call like an Old Testament view of of the world. So peace is this. Um, there, there's a Greek word. It's what 
Irenae, something like that. Oh, uh, um, yeah. So it's I had basically a, the Hebrew ver. It's the Greek yeah. version of the Hebrew word shalom. I had a, a seminary professor who used to say ironic all the time. He'd uh, say, "This is not oh, ironic, but and, not ironic, but uh, ironic, peaceful. a peaceful." Yeah. yeah, and I was like, "I've never heard," but it is. It's related to that. Yeah, I like that. Idea. Peaceful. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's the idea of so shalom, and shalom is the idea of of. Of wholeness. Interestingly, similar to the idea of purity. It's a wholeness. It's a completeness. It's things being as they sh- mm-hmm. as they should be. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like all is right in the world. Things are working as they should. So when God created the world, there was shalom. It was mm-hmm. how it should have been. But then sin breaks shalom. And the promises that were going back to Shalom, interesting. I, you know, he he will be called the Prince of Peace, mm-hmm. uh, the Prince of Shalom. It's interesting. Like he's that. That's what he comes to bring is to restore the Shalom that has been broken. So when we think about being a peacemaker, so literally the word there is like a uh, a Shalom maker, mm-hmm. like someone who makes. Peace. It's not, so. Okay. This is different than peacekeeping. Yes. Um, this is different. Than, so when we think of peace, is we think of the absence of conflict. Mm-hmm. We just think all, all we can think about is kind of getting rid of the yeah. stuff that stresses us out. And that makes me think of like a family who's dysfunctional, and somebody is just like, oh, well, don't like. Poke that person or don't say that because Correct. we want to keep the peace, but it's still but it's not peace. broken. No, it's, it's, it's still broken. not That's working exactly as right. it should. It's yeah. broken. It just has it's just not erupting yeah. right now. Mm-hmm. Um you and I have talked extensively about the bear. I mm-hmm. became a fan of that show because of you. And to talk mm-hmm. about a a n like a lack of shalom oh, in man. a family or yeah. in a business in a yeah. in a group of people. I mean, it's just brokenness, 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 and it's horrible. But yeah. it's like, like there can be like these moments of you like, start to see <laughs> like it, where there's a little yeah. bit of 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 like a l- absence of conflict. Yeah, and you're hopeful, <laughs> and you're hopeful, and it all but breaks then it down just again. <laughs> it all breaks down, and not just breaks down, but I mean, yeah. like, like it implodes. Yeah, it, yeah, uh, yeah. What is it? The, the 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 fecal matter hits the oscillating air mover or something like that. <laughs> to yeah. say it like my uh, my professor Ed Stetzer said it. So um, yeah, the, the, that and and so um, yeah, I think we think of peace as as kind of those moments of 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 calm mm-hmm. or where no one's yelling at each other. And maybe 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 the reason that we think of that like like that's the best thing we can envision. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just yeah. like uh, just kind of get me. Sort of away from all of that, right? To an island. Uh, let me put my toes in the in the warm sand. Mm-hmm. Read a book. No one yelling at me. No, nobody screaming. No angry customers. No nagging kids. I just need peace. And so, what we want is a kind of a escape from all of that. Turmoil. Uh, the idea of shalom is just different than that. It, mm-hmm. it, it probably does include some absence of the turmoil, but but only insofar as that that turmoil doesn't function to bring about what how things should be. Mm-hmm. And so peace is more a picture of an idyllic, like what how things were meant to function. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, so the idea of making peace is, I think, much more is much more in depth than what we think. This is more than separating two people who are yep. trying to fight and getting in between sure. them and being like, hey, please don't fight. Please don't fight. It's more like that's sort of a peacemaking, but not really what what until, is being had in mind yeah, here. You could separate them, but until you're willing to get to the bottom And of reconcile the relationship yes, whatever's fully. whatever's going on. That's the idea. Yeah. So pe- peacemaking is about, in some sense, reconciling the world, your world, to the way that it, to the way that it should be. This would be, I think, really related to the statement in the Lord's Prayer: "Your kingdom come, your will mm-hmm. be done on mm-hmm. earth as it is in heaven." Well, what would that look like in your marriage? What would that look like with in your relationship with your kids, or a coworker, or a parent? Um, what will that look like? And so, peacemaking 
is often is often the hard work relationally. And I think where a lot of where you know the most friction we run into this is with our relationships is the hard work of of really getting to the bottom of things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, for the sake of restoring the relationship back to its kind of harmonious mm-hmm. place. So maybe the best way, like a machine breaking down that needs to be repaired so that it can work harmoniously in the way that that it, it was designed and intended to work. I, I just ran into this uh, a week or two ago with a dear friend who I work closely with. And I had just been noticing the few weeks before just something in the nature of our communication. I don't even know how. It's amazing how you can pick up on these things. Mm -hmm. It just wasn't right. Something was a little bit off. You know, that kind of comes upon you. Those realizations kind of come upon you over several conversations. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, uh, yeah, I just, I finally, I'm just like, something doesn't seem to be right. The best way I had to describe it was it feels like there's some sand in the gears. Just, it's not, we're not operating like the way that we would normally operate. And I was in the middle of a meeting, just a small meeting, me and, and this friend and one other friend. And, um, and it just, it, sand in the gears and just mm-hmm. in the, the nature of our conversation. And so, Without being confrontational, I just decided to address it then and there and just say, hey, it just feels like there's some sand in the gears in the way that we're communicating with each other. It, have I done something? Is there something going on that I need to know about? What? And, and so he just began to, to, to tell me um, about some things that I had been saying or just ways of talking to and about him that made him feel like I was, this is more than just touchy-feely stuff, just kind of patronizing, devaluing. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and so it just, and it didn't feel good. And he was just feeling that from me. Mm. And I had to be honest and admit that due to the situation we were in, there was some of what he was saying was true. It was like, yeah, I kind of do feel like that's how you are sometimes. And, but I'm sorry and I'm sorry I put you in that box. And it's humbling because you have to repent in front of someone and mm-hmm. you have to say, I'm mm-hmm. sorry. And and he, for his part, said the same back to me. Relationship restored. It's like if there's a conduit between the two of us like this, a relational conduit, you can tell mm-hmm. when that relationship is flowing back and forth really well and you know when it's not. Mm-hmm. And I think peacemaking is the willingness to go to go to the mat to figure out what what is obstructing the flow of relationship here and let's fix that. Now, yeah. let's be honest, you can't do that with everyone. And I, what I mean by that is just some relationships and you just have to kind of resign yourself to this and you ought to know which ones they are. Hopefully you do. It's like some and some might even be family where it's like, we're never going to have a great relationship. We see the world in different ways. Um, God's not called you to be best friends with everybody. But man, and, the, and so what I can do, what Paul says, insofar as it depends on you, live peace, peaceably yeah. with all men. Yeah. Right? I'm going to be kind. I'm going to be gracious, so forth. But I'm not going around to, like, let's say, some of you might want to do with your father or mother mm-hmm. or that really hurt. Like, it's just not going to be worth it to go into mm-hmm. that. Like, are, are you really going to be best friends with them? Or is it really going to have that kind of... But in those relationships that you know, I mean, if this, if it, if you're married, that's certainly one of those relationships yeah. Yeah. where it's like, I am, I am in relationship with this person mm-hmm. and that's not going anywhere. Then, then my goal is not just to get you to, to kind of stop the fight or to get you to stop criticizing me, or to just placate you because, because that's just the easy and, yeah. and like and we have all of these kind of coping mechanisms mm-hmm. for conflict. Um, I'll just shut down. I just won't talk about it. I'll just go hang out with my buddies. Just get out of the house. Get away from her. Whatever. And it's like we're not really dealing with anything. Mm-hmm. And so I think to be a peacemaker, if you think about what that means, a peace 
maker. I'm making peace. It's an active, I think, dirty, sometimes, when I mean dirty, I just mean willing to get down in it, Mm -hmm. Um, confrontational in the best possible use of that word, not like a showing up and telling you where you're wrong, but a willingness to confront real problems to say, it feels like this is going on between us when it would be easier to just ignore it. I think peacemaking means willfully stepping into all of that. Mm -hmm. So it really is bringing about a a kind of restoration of relationship in times when when maybe you don't want to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, it, it's a willingness to stick around and fight for something, and uh, mm. when and I'm thinking about especially in the bear, when the system itself, because a lot of times, like you're talking about things working together in the way that they're intended to work together, and that's people, that's families, that's a church, that's yeah. the body of Christ, and uh, we're so we're committed to one another. Well, that was you know, yeah. and that's a great um, that's a great thing you you about that show. And if you've not seen it, you know, Sorry. your discretion advise watch <laughs> yes, for what, sure. you know, whatever. But um, you know, there's uh, whoever what's his name, Robbie or whatever. I can't remember what's Is his name. Richie? Richie, Richie yeah. in the show. Yeah, I hate. Ooh, hated him. Yeah, yeah. Hate's probably not strong enough a word. We Heather yeah. and I saw him in Brooklyn. I told yeah. you this. We saw him in Brooklyn when we were there last, and Heather went up and said hello. I did not thank him for his part in the show and what, what she loved about it. But he's a really difficult personality in the show. I mm-hmm. mean, really difficult. He, I just He just got on my nerves to such a degree. And I found myself just thinking, this is such a dysfunctional business. I would have fired that guy day one. But there was something about watching that show and watching the commitment that they had made to each other. Yeah. And to see what was possible in someone over time when you just kind of continually, relentlessly just keep showing up in someone's life. It's like you can really, you could really affect Mm -hmm. some change. Mm -hmm. And it just, it kind of convicted me. I was like, I, I, I would be, I would have been far more quick to cut this person out of my life mm-hmm. because they're just too difficult. But there was a continual effort toward peace. And I think, I, you know. Yeah, and it wasn't, and, and it wasn't, I'm going to placate you no. or I'm going to let you maintain the status quo yeah. of what we're yeah. doing here. Yeah. There was still this, yeah. we're going this direction. Yeah. But I'm committed to your good and I want you to go yeah. with us. No doubt. I think there are times yeah. where you do have to, you, you do have to say, you cross this line again yeah. and the relationship ends, whatever. Or you can't, I can't be in relationship with you. I, I'm reminded of, I, I think I've shared it probably on here before, a phone call. Uh, uh, someone heard, I can't remember if it was a friend or maybe a sermon I was listening to. Anyway, uh, someone, a, a woman speaking to her father on the phone in a hotel lobby somewhere in another city and just saying, Dad, I hear what you're saying, but if you keep talking to me like yeah. this, I'm going to hang up in a very calm voice. Mm-hmm. I'm going to hang up the phone. And it was like, that's not easy to get to, by the way, because yeah. those you know relationships just... But, I mean, there, there's a place for that to say, yeah. hey, I would love a relationship S- with you if... Yeah, sometimes setting boundaries <laughs> a is thing. a form of peacemaking. It is. That's yeah. exactly right. That's exactly yeah. right. So we're not saying we're not saying that you just have to kind of live your whole life in, in, in pursuit of trying to restore peace in every relationship. Mm-hmm. It's, it's impossible in some. But I think... But I think the but I but I also think we don't make the effort nearly as much as we could yeah. and should. And I think our tools for doing so are just poor. We only know how to show up and accuse. We only know how to show up and rage, or we only know how to kind of hide and keep all that stuff inside. Mm-hmm. But when we can lovingly confront, and I, I, there there is a beauty in that, and it's interesting. I was trying to. I was, I've written, I haven't written all this part out of the sermon yet, but it, I'd be curious to see how I land on this for this weekend. But it's the idea of they shall be called sons of God, and it's it's like 
It's like you're you're in the family business. I was yeah. thinking about what that it's means. It's like you're acting like your dad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's 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 actually I mean because I think about like what does it mean in those days? Like what did it mean for a century to be a son of someone? Well, it was it was, it was essentially your identity. Mm-hmm. It was it was a, it was a it was a pedigree. Where do you mm-hmm. come from? This mm-hmm. is why Jesus um, begins with genealogies. Like his, his his story in two of the gospels begins with genealogies. It's like your pedigree is your son of mm-hmm. where you come from. And so to be called a son of God is like it's like a pretty high pedigree. Yeah. And, and that would have been yeah, okay. So Matthew I Matthew is primarily a discipleship book written to um like you can I think it's it's first written to a Jewish audience. It is. Um but if you think about the idea of a peacemaker, someone who uh, like blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. That is that is an a very inclusive kind of mm. idea. It's it's you know what I mean? No. Oh. <laughs> so um just that that if you can seek a kingdom regardless of ethnicity or um yeah. pedigree or Well, this is what happened. Whatever. And and these things are true of kingdom seekers, not just because of the like their situation or circumstance of their birth. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. So, so let me ask this, like, like when Peter is going to Cornelius' house and Cornelius being a Gentile, mm-hmm. and he's inviting him into, based mm-hmm. on the leading mm-hmm. of the Spirit, inviting yeah. him into the family of God. I think about Ephesians. Ephesians 2, mm-hmm. and there's a lot there about making peace. The mm-hmm. two mm-hmm. Jew Gentile mm-hmm. making peace. Yeah. There's a spiritual dimension to this making peace as well, making peace with God, bringing people, inviting people into the mm-hmm. family of God. I think that's another maybe dimension of this. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with what you were saying. Yeah. I, I think it I think that is what I'm saying. Oh, okay, is, cool. Great. Is that there, yeah, there is rather than it being exclusive. Yes, it's inclusive, inclusive, which is exactly I, what happened. Did I say the so, other? What, no, no, the other you, it's right. Okay. So one new man, that's all of Ephesians yeah. 2 is the idea of uh, those, you you were what, without hope and without God mm-hmm. in the world, but now you've become, so the, really the ultimate peace being made is the ultimate peace of being, of having peace with God. Mm-hmm. And I think, and I, so, so yeah, I mean, and, 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 and that's exactly you mm-hmm. shall be called sons of God. Well, the Son of God mm-hmm. is called the Prince of Peace. Why? Because he came to restore back to relationship man with God mm-hmm. and to bring and, people like you and me into yeah. the family of God. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, you're. you're and you're to in restore that us to relationship to one uh, another and all of that. What, yeah. 2 Corinthians 5, Ministry of Reconciliation? Mm-hmm. It's yep. probably the same thing. Yeah. That's I really think good. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Last one. <laughs> okay. Um, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So read the next one too, because I think maybe that the next one there, blessed are you, is almost mm-hmm. like a taking of that final beatitude and turning it to because it, it this changes right. So he's now speaking. The others are blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed yeah. are the merciful these categories of people, but then he's turning and speaking to someone directly, blessed are you. Mm-hmm. And I think he does mean anyone who fits this bill, but he has their people, he called his disciples to him, it says, to begin this. So right. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm wondering if this, so the, the question is, are there eight or nine of these? If right. this eighth one is, if that ninth one, let's say, is a is a personal application to the people that were there right then of essentially this this eighth, if they kind of are a combo platter, if you yeah. will. So re- re- yeah. read it too. So blessed are you when others yeah. revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. And that did happen. Yeah. So we went and read this that's in Acts 6, where somewhere, I might have that wrong, but it's somewhere right in there, where Peter and John are brought before a council mm. and told mm-hmm. not to speak anymore. Mm-hmm. And and then, and there's this, and, and it says they went back and they rejoiced that they mm-hmm. were counted worthy to, to suffer, suffer. For the name. For the I name. Think, yeah, I, I think that's right. Yeah. I, think, I think that's probably a call back to Matthew uh, 5, whatever verse that is, probably 12 or 13 Acts or something like that. 
four, I think. I, is yeah. it the end of Acts four? Because I actually think it's not. Mm. Uh, I think there's another place where they think Peter's dead, but maybe it's there. Fi- figure it out. You'll you'll see. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So. So the idea is, it's interesting. So I, th- I think what we're looking, blessed are you when you when you are persecuted for righteousness sake. So there's very, so here, here we're coming around to the idea that now I'm, that there's a cost to following Jesus mm-hmm. and that that's part of what it means to be, to, to be in this kingdom, that, that when you live in a different kind of way, it, it may even... It, 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 it may even get to the point that people are reviling you, cursing you, wanting to stop you for not just for your faith, but really it's for your commitment to living, living for Christ. And, and, and you know, we're, we're even seeing this, and I think increasingly so in our world, we're holding uh, certain points of view about, about life, about about biology, about relationships, marriage, can get you labeled uh, a bigot, uh, 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 whatever a phobe, uh, um, like you're, it, and so, and so, it, yeah, it's, uh, I think the, I think the, the, the idea here is that that's part of what comes in some sense with the territory of following Jesus or being a kingdom person is that your life is going to move in such an opposite direction to the world around you that it's going to create some mm-hmm. conflict. Mm-hmm. And don't be surprised when you do, when it, when it does, because it's it, it just an indicator that you're on the right track. Now, yeah. I think the key thing here to understand is that it doesn't mean that every bad thing that happens, this isn't like... Um, what we can't do is take every negative circumstance and apply it to the devil or assume that somehow I'm suffering because I'm a Christian, my car broke down, or because I'm a Christian, I got fired. Well, it might also be that you're terrible at your job. Mm-hmm. So, like, both of those things, like, yeah. doesn't necessarily, it, it could be true, <laughs> but there might also be some, like, are you really suffering yeah. for yeah. righteousness' sake? Yeah. yeah. Or is it just because. Uh, you're hard-headed and stubborn, mm-hmm. and you haven't listened. Yeah, and so I, I think that's just, I think there's a call to real purity of heart before exactly. I hear. Yes, yeah, because yeah. like, yeah. uh, because because yeah. I don't want to attribute suffering to mm-hmm. myself. It's easy to make yourself a martyr. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I didn't think that's find not it. the idea. You didn't find it. See, that's because uh, I think it's. Let me see I your Bible know. while you're talking to me. <laughs> well, <laughs> here it is. And when they had called in the apostles, uh. they beat them. And charge them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Verse 41. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. Hmm. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that Christ is Jesus. That's a that's a direct, that's a direct mm-hmm. persecution for mm-hmm. they're they're literally suffering for the name of and the cause of Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, this is not just any bad circumstance applied mm-hmm. to you, but there are times where when you live in a certain, you you have to be prepared, and I think increasingly so in a world like ours, uh, we have to be prepared that living for Christ is is going to cost us something, and might socially cost us something, mm-hmm. and we we've got to be willing to say, I choose Jesus above whatever social. Um, I don't know, uh, yeah. standing I might be able to have mm-hmm. um, and be willing to do that. And hopefully it doesn't come to something like that. But the, the promise is that if it does, you're you're blessed. Mm-hmm. What's the reward that goes with that? Will you go back and read? What does he say? For great is your reward? I think there is mm-hmm. a part where he says great is your reward. There, yes, there is. Wow. Um, rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. Is that blessed are you? Oh, yes, that's blessed are you. So what's the one for the previous Uh, beatitude? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Inclusio. Inclusio. Yeah. Yeah. It goes back to the the beginning. Yeah. That's what it is to be a part of the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. That's that's pretty incredible just to think about. I think that in today's day and age, you're right. There's... There is something that's costly about it, but also there's that salt and light component that you were talking about where if we are 
like sincerely and truly seeking the kingdom, there is something that's commendable about that. Mm. There's something about a person who is like, I'm not doing this. I'm doing this from a pure heart. Mm -hmm. Um, There's, I'm not doing it for like an outward kind of accolade or reward. Um, That is, that is very attractive Mm. um, to the world around us. So while some people are saying, get away from me, other people are just profoundly attracted to what it is and that's why it's so important yeah that we do this well really good yeah